A wide range of factors within the organization may affect the availability and use of human resources for a project. You should consider your organization's existing human resources and personnel administration policies, marketplace conditions, and the organizational culture and structure. Organizational structures can pose constraints or benefit human resource planning. For example, a strong matrix organization allows project managers more authority in acquiring staff from other sectors. Functional organizations provide project managers with little authority and may make it difficult for them to acquire appropriate resources. Organizational culture and politics can also affect human resource management planning. For example, they may affect how well team members from different departments are able to work together. An organization's existing human resources help determine what resources can be allocated to a project. If experienced resources are unavailable internally, you may have to adapt the project schedule to accommodate less experienced team members. In busy periods, there may be few existing human resources, whereas in quiet periods, you may have access to more staff. Personnel administration policies include collective bargaining agreements, employment legislation, and other contractual obligations. These policies may specify how and when people can work and what processes need to be followed when acquiring and releasing people from the project. Marketplace conditions typically impact the available budget for the project, which may impact your project staff planning decisions. For example, they may impact the availability of funds for hiring and training staff. Ultimately, taking the time to acquire project team members with the right skills provides the foundation for achieving project goals. To do so, you'll need the Human Resource Management Plan and several organizational process assets and enterprise environmental factors. Although you may have already estimated the needs for your project, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have access to everyone and everything you need. Resource constraints may have an impact on other areas of your project, such as the budget or schedule. This is an unfortunate reality, and the best thing you can do is communicate with your sponsor and stakeholders so they understand the project constraints and the reasoning behind your decisions. Let's say, for example, that you would like to offer positions to D. Alford and C. Hart, but your budget has been reduced. Instead of offering a position to D. Alford, you must select L. Wu, who is less expensive. However, L. Wu scores lower in both availability and ability. How might this affect other areas of the project? Could there be delays to schedule activities and perhaps more errors? If you find that the only resources you can afford are lacking in skills or experience, you may see various impacts on your project. You may incur training costs, you may experience higher defects and error rates, which may impact quality, or you may have to extend your scheduled activities to accommodate a slower pace of work. If you are very fortunate, you may have access to more resources than you actually need. In this case, you may opt to utilize your resources on a part-time basis, sharing them with other projects. However, you'll want to be careful about this as you may encounter inter-project conflicts if both of your projects experience increased workloads at the same time. You may consider placing a number of resources on a contingency basis so that if you do experience an unexpected increase in workload, you can quickly call upon these resources. This will save you time in having to identify skilled employees at a moment's notice. Similar to a professional sports team, these skilled members will sit on the bench until they are called upon. Once you have information about the team required to complete a project successfully, you'll want to ensure that the process of assembling this team goes smoothly. Two techniques typically used for acquiring staff in-house are pre-assignment and negotiation. Pre-assignment involves selecting project team members in advance. This occurs if particular workers have unique expertise or skills, if a client has requested a specific employee, or if someone has been promised involvement in a project. 
you may need to persuade internal functional managers or managers of other projects to release people for your project team. You may also need to persuade external organizations to provide resources on a contractual basis. These negotiations hinge on the availability and skills of the resources. If the project team members you need aren't available from the pool of existing employees in your organization or aren't all available at a particular location, you can set up virtual teams or use acquisition to contract staff from third-party organizations. A virtual team is a group of people who work primarily off-site and interact via electronic means. Creating a virtual team enables project managers to acquire team members regardless of their location, mobility, and working hours. If an organization lacks the in-house human resources to complete a project, it will be necessary to acquire external resources. This is usually done by hiring consultants or by subcontracting elements of the project work.